Yo, what the f*** is going on, dude? Welcome to the video where we're going to talk about my vertical, vertical jump, starting from regular 30 inches to fucking next level, baby, 40. Cool. Yo, if you know me, if you want to get to know me, check my podcast. If you don't know me, I have trouble staying on topic. So this is going to be tough for me, but I'm going to try to answer the most questions I can so I can help you in your dunk journey. That's what it's about. It's about jumping higher. My first journey from 30 to 40 was pretty standard, but after that 40 to 42.5, <laughs> that was a lot of struggle. So I did have some struggles. I did have a lot of injuries. I'll try to go to get over as, get as, I'll try to get as much as I can out of my mouth. If possible. If not, we'll see. If not, I hope you just enjoy. That's literally all I care about in life is enjoy. If you want to know more about that podcast, that's it. I'm not going to promote. I'm just going to go. Let's see. Should we get to the video already? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Yes. So thank you for tuning in. Subscribe and you will meet the love of your life. The next person you talk to will be them. How crazy is that? Imagine if that really happens, please let me know. That'd be freaking wild. So it all begins in my backyard. June 16th, 16th, and I think he messes up the date and says it again later, but that's another story. Young Steve right there, Boca Raton, Florida. Let's get it. I'm five years old. The passion runs deep. Let's go. Show him that. Oh, two-hander. Right, left. Right, left. Ooh. Nice. A little bit of energy here. Watch out. Hello. Give me the ball. Slow down. Ooh. Slow down. Yeah. Okay. Yeesh. Okay, nice. so you can That's tell cool. it's something I've always loved to do. I thought it was a short person's complex to overcome my short height when I was like in middle school, but I mean, I've been dunking since I was a freaking toddler. Always what I love to do. Nice. And um, if you didn't know, I am Michael Jordan. Now you know. Okay. If you didn't nice. know, <laughs> now you know. Okay. Now, this know is where it gets a little funky. <laughs> um. I don't recall doing that. I don't recall knowing that dog. Maybe we made eye contact and we had a connection. Or maybe I was just trying to be funny. I'm a comedian now. Maybe I was just trying to make jokes. Like, I know him. You know, I don't know that dog. Because how could I know a dog? Imagine a toddler and a dog having some rapport. That's funny. I was fu funny since then. I've been dunking since then. It's all full circle. Okay, here we go. So this was college. I decided to go on my dunk journey. Thank you to Andy Nicholson. Over the hill dunker, you'll always be one of my biggest inspirations. I've always loved dunking. In high school, I touched the rim for the first time, and then I'm like, how high can I take this? I started jumping and tried to hang on the rim. My first goal was hanging on the rim with my fingertips. I did that, broke my ankle, had to do it again, and then I'm like, okay, how far can I take this? Found his videos, and I'm like, okay, he went from being 5'10", not to, this sounds like I'm going to say he grew, but it went from five, he was 5'10", 39 years old, went from touching the rim, hanging on the rim to dunking. I'm like, I can definitely do it. I'm young. So after that, I'm like, I can do it. I started my journey in the fall of uh, at UCF, my first semester in college. And here goes my first ever start day. All I could do was hang on the rim. I was trying uh, one foot, just showing my progress because I knew I would dunk because I'm so confident in myself. Okay, now I want to point out here, I caught it with my bare fingertips, barely got my fingertips. And this is a 9, 10.5 rim. This is not even a 10 foot rim. Now, what I want to point out here is that this was not my first attempt. This was after like many attempts of touching the rim, grabbing the rim. I only got to hang one. And you could see I almost slipped off. I barely got enough. So that's around a 30 inch jump, maybe even lower. 91 inch standing reach. You do the math. The rim is 9, 10.5. What is that? I don't know. Nine. Uh, let's see. 120 minus 91 is 29 inches to touch it. And another inch is like 28 inches, bro. 28 and a half inches. I had no bounce. And that's where I started from. That's where I had my very first start day, and that's what it was. And you can see I'm naturally right-left, which will be a reoccurring theme coming up. And so that was November 30th, 2011, and then December 20th on a lower rim, the first rim that you saw, or the first rim I ever hung on. I don't have the video. I tried to find it, couldn't find it. But this is the very first rim I've ever hung on with my fingertips before that day of my actual start day. And this is the, one of the first times I ever caught on tape by hanging with two hands, but I didn't know it was a lower rim. It felt like a little low. I couldn't tell. I didn't know. Maybe it just had bounced. Anyway, one of my first rim hangs, December 20th. And again, that took me many tries. That was a huge goal of mine because just thinking of NBA players, me, 5'10", white, horrible haircut, I could do 
hang with two hands, legitimately not reaching, not barely grabbing with fingertips, hanging with two hands, being able to swing was a very inspiring type of goal to set for myself. That's why I was so pumped and that's why I did it. So December, then 20th. So what was I doing here? What was I doing? I was, I tried the jump manual, gave it like two or three weeks, did strength training. I was already lifting in high school, doing squats. I was pretty strong with my legs, played a lot of basketball, decided to drop the weights, drop the program, just jump. So when you see these next videos where it says week six right here, all I was doing was jumping. All I was doing was jumping at the rim, trying to hit my wrist on the rim, trying to grab my palm on the rim, trying to hang with two hands, different, different plants, different things. So that's what you see here. All I was doing was jumping. So week six results, January says the 10th. So this date is off that I have here, but whatever. First hang on two hands, um, left, right. And also I think this was like, I thought this was like a legit rim. Maybe I, I didn't know. I don't know. But I, I wrote here first two hand rim hang. I don't know. Maybe it was like simultaneous. The other one was like a little bit. I don't know. Left, right. I switched to left, right. Cause when I tried it, I got a little bit of a boost. I think cause my left leg was dominant from all the years of playing hoops and going off my left leg for layups switching to left right i got an instant boost so i stuck to that which co becomes a uh, recurring theme then i tried to dunk a small ball a million times unsuccessful very frustrating so this is what i was doing i was jumping trying to push myself to do something i couldn't do can't i can't emphasize that enough push yourself you just reach a little bit higher jump a ton when you're going from the uh, low 30s to the mid 30s all you need to do is jump for most people i don't think you really need to strength train yet just jump 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 as you can see i didn't have great technique um, you can work on your technique, you can work on your approach, you can get faster, you can do a lot of things, you can get really frustrated and kick the ball. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. Um, and that's what I was working on. I couldn't even get a small ball. I was very frustrated, couldn't even get a small ball, but I could hoop a little bit, crossed up my friend, shoot the ball, does he make it? No. And then look, I try to, you see I'm always jumping. See, I can't even get to rim level basically, but I thought I was jumping high. Okay, so then we fast forward to February. I go to the rim that I always started on. I say week 12, I was trying to make it, I don't know if it was exactly 12 weeks of training. It was just a lot of jumping. And I think it might've been exactly 12 weeks, but it has nothing to do with like following a program. I was just jumping. I go to this rim. I had other days that were similar to this. As you can see, I'm warming up kind of close back rimming kind of early in the session, missed a bunch. And then I get super dramatic with it. Where is it? Super dramatic on one of these misses right after I miss. I got pretty close and I knew I wanted to make the video. Editing sucks, but I got way better at editing as well. How fast am I talking? And there it is, my first ever one foot dunk, first dunk ever. The rim's like 9-9, nine, nine, but at the time it was legit to me. It was a, a hoop I played, hoops at, hooped at, pawed at, balled at a lot. So to be able to dunk on a rim that I went from not even being able to hang on, this is the first rim I hung on, to now I'm dunking on it, was just an extreme, extreme dream come true for me. And then, who has lived up to their just the beginning phrase, more than moi? Okay, so here we go. So then... That was my first dunk off one foot. And in this session, I almost had a off the lob attempt. Where is that one? I think it's right here. Where is it? So as you can see, I was also trying lobs right here. Left, right. Got really close. Very efficient. It looks closer than it was. I still need to get higher to get down with it. And the angle super low. Okay. So now... Um, so now I'm obsessed with getting my first lob dunk. I got my first one foot dunk. All I was doing is jumping. Same thing. Now we're into April, February, March, April. Two months later, I'm super close to getting a lob dunk. This one's probably about 9, 10. As you can tell, very close. I act like it's, I thought it was way higher than it was. Like it looked like way better, but now you can see how much progress I really made. Not a great jump. I was kind of under the rim. Could have made it more efficient. I pause it there because I'm saying my wrist is above the rim, but it's probably not. The it's definitely not, actually. The angle's super low. My wrist is at the level. It's definitely more like, I love having this arm here. It's definitely like fingertips. I barely back rim it, meaning if it plays... I skim my hand on the rim, just get enough on top of the ball to push it down, back rim it. I'm getting closer, and then I have a really good attempt here as well with two hands. Hang on the rim, but again, I'm not high enough. I'm, I'm just basically grabbing the ball and hanging on the rim. I don't have enough to like put it down, okay? But I'm getting close, 9, 10 rim. That's all I'm doing, throwing lobs, going to get it, running as fast as I can, pushing as hard as I can, just getting good at it. A lot of it is just technique and getting good at it. That's what I tell people. If you're close to dunking, if you can touch the rim, you can dunk. Just jump a ton. Push yourself. You don't need to get stronger till I think upper 30s or more. Unless you're crazy short, you need to get crazy strong because of the torque of your body. If you're tall, you can, you can make a lot of progress by just jumping. Okay, so now we're into May. Same rim. My vert was pretty good. It's actually not much different than it is now. 
I'm, I mean, even if three, four inches in six years, I'm happy with that. I had to get a lot stronger. I was already decently strong. I have a lot more strength to build, but that's really hard to do. I thought this was a big jump, catching with two hands, room to spare. I thought I was like cocking it back, but it's really the same thing. I just go up and bring my arms. I'm just not like reaching for it. It's, it's a little, it's a little bit better, but it's not as big as I thought it was. I really thought I was flying a couple of dribble dunks actually, as you see here. So that one wasn't bad. You can tell my footwork is terrible. If you look right here, look how bad that left ankle is just really unoptimal practice. Uh, I'm carving in really bad patterns for myself and that comes back to haunt me. And we're seeing what I'm doing, catching some lobs. My first ever lob dunk right here. I don't know if this is the very, very first one, but I think it is. And I caught it with two, dunked it with two. Why with two hands? I just had more control. I couldn't even do it with one. This day, I, I remember I caught it. I'm pretty sure. Caught it, tried to dunk with one, catch it with two, dunk with one. Couldn't even do it. Later, if you go to my YouTube channel, these are all my oldest videos. These are all on YouTube, by the way. If you see, I, I say like I catch a one handed dunk because I, I actually did two hands first. I know that's ridiculous, but um, they're not they're not like two hands and I'm really that good at it. I just really catch it, barely get it over the rim. And it's basically like that same two hand rim hang just with the ball and just enough to put it down. Uh, and the editing's terrible. OK, how about another edit? Why don't we show it one more time with extra slow mo and then slow mo the dismount. Very good, Steven. Okay, okay. Quality and sound has all improved a ton. Okay, so a lot of the same. Barely making... You can see with this one that my fingertips freaking... I'm really holding with my fingertips. So, a little bit of an anomaly to dunk with two hands off your lob. It's a little weird, but this angle shows it a little better. This one looks like I'm jumping... Like I really have room to spare, but again, super low angle. Just getting it above the rim. I can't stress that enough. If you watch now when I do my... um. When I do my self bounce dunk, it's like just above the rim. Like a lot of these, I was hitting front rim, a lot of pushing them through, but just enough the rim just to get it over the rim. So it looks like really like I'm flying, but it's just above it. I'm just really efficient with it. And then these guys are hilarious, saying some stuff to me. Little one handed dunk. And then where do they? They said some stuff to me. I don't remember what he said. I really wish I could put subtitles. Something about you did this. And I was like, huh? Just joking around. Sick picks, Steve. Really sick picks. Wait, great still shots. Okay, those are actually super dope. When you can dunk, bro, back then, and you show your pictures, you're fucking hanging on the rim, the balls through the rim. What? Okay. So then, just jumping, same thing. Now you can see August. So that was May, June, July, August. Three months later, a little bit more progress. You can see I have a little bit more room to spare. Back to that 9, 10.5 rim that I was on at the very start of the video. So now pretty much full circle back to school. A little bit of room to spare. And then a big milestone here. First time I ever dunked my wrist, a little bit of power on this dunk, um, and now I hit my wrist on the rim. So that was a big deal for me, and all I was doing was throwing lobs. Literally, all I was doing was jumping, jumping, jumping. So I hit my wrist on the rim, and that's big. Okay, so then uh, it's it's been almost, it's been eight months? How long has it been? However long, all I was doing was jumping. I was pretty much, pretty strong. Wrist to level, wrist to rim level is almost 40 inches. It's probably like 38, 39. Um, on the 9.10.5, and then, here we go, All birds gotta fly. You heard hold of the it. day, I'm switching to right left, just because I like the one to bang it, I really wanted to windmill, and I really thought this was a big dunk, but as you can tell now, that's like, compared to what I do now on that rim, my head looks near the rim, I'm catching it way here, and I'm smashing it into oblivion, okay, um, and now this one was kind of a yam. Little bit of the only, it's more just efficiency and perfect timing. A little bit of room to spare because I caught a little bit like this, but still nothing more crazy compared to what I do now. So you can see the progress. You can see the footwork is really good though. Look how straight that footwork is. Look how upright I go. Don't come with the right timing. Really good. I thought that was absolutely smash. And for the time, it was. From not dunking on this rim, barely back rimming, barely reaching, to be able to smash like that, I was in heaven. Okay? Now my goal from November was I want to hit that 40-inch vertical. And in March, it happened. So now we're over a year. Yeah, we're over a year, almost a year and a half of starting. And as you see here, I'm running. I get my wrist. This is a 10 foot rim. And you can see here, pretty good editing here. You can see my wrist hits the rim right there. You can see my whole wrist is over about an inch down. It's very close. The little marker I had in my shoes um, measured my vert, the little technology I had. 
says 40.3. It might not be exact. The, the, the fact that you touch the rim may keep you in the air a tiny bit, fraction of a second longer, which affects your thing, but I, or your vert. But I measured it multiple times, hit 40 a few times. Based on where I hit on the rim, that's the more accurate measurement. It's just simple math. I have a 91-inch standing reach. My hand is about 8 inches, a couple inches down, very close to 40. That's how I got to 40. And I want to stress that it wasn't just 40 inches, and that was every jump. That was my best jump of the day. Um, and that's not with a ball in my hand. That's not catching a ball and dunking it. So when I'm dunking, if I were to catch a ball and then dunk it, even if I complete the dunk on 10 feet, that might not have even been a 40 inch max jump. You know what I mean? It might've been 39 on the Richter scale or whatever the scale they use, but you get the point 40 inches on my best day. That's what I did. And then March, April, May, June, July, August, next August, I get a little saucy with it, acting like I'm all that. Oh, and he's dunking off the dribble. He's got a little mix. I'm feeling good. Back to the rim. Same dunks. But again, you can see a lot of progress since then. Even though it's been six freaking years, I should have had more progress. But still really happy with how I've been able to do it. And up until this point, I didn't really have any struggles. I was doing right, left, little windmill. Um, I don't think that was my first windmill, but like you can see it's super low. I'm not catching it up here. I'm not destroying it. All those little things are fractions of an inch. You catch it a little here, that's a fraction of an inch. You catch it up here, it's another fraction of an inch. You bring it around and you smash it compared to just rattling it in, that's a half an inch to an inch. So all those things is like, it's the same dunk, but it's inches different. Um, and then July 20, 2014, so since then, after that, I'm pretty sure I got injured from August 2013 to July 2014. I'm pretty sure I got injured. Other than that, I was switching to right, left, um, back and forth, trying different things, trying to get better, mainly just trying to jump higher. My focus was not building a foundation, building different uh, angles and tricks and different game situations. I was simply trying to jump my highest. So this was a great day for me. Dunking off the dribble, legit 10 foot rim at UCF. I was really happy with this, jumping left, right. I even got right here, as you see, your boy, if you know me, you watch me do two hands off the dribble. And if you want to know why I'm better off the lob than a dribble, I have a whole video explaining that here that I posted recently. Ding. And then besides that, left, right, I have another video of me, why I switched plants. Just look up why I switched plants. But the long story is that this was my best day I had in a long time. Left, right, I was really good in terms of being a regular dunker. My dribble dunks were a little bit lower than my lob dunks, um, which is normal because you have the ball in your hand. But... My footwork was terrible, as you as you watch here. Um, pretty good dunk there on 10 feet for a left, right. But look at this windmill. Nowhere close. Not saying that I couldn't windmill, but my vertical wasn't that high. I was just very efficient with my jumps left, right. I jumped right, right at the rim. I jumped very straight up. I jumped really well. But the thing I did bad was my footwork. I couldn't fix that foot turning outwards. And all those dribble dunks were on my best attempts. There were some attempts where I went to jump and completely bail. Like I would literally go up and get like half as high, couldn't even touch the rim because my footwork was so bad. So I tried to fix it, had so much trouble with it, really wanted that windmill and my mind shifted to that windmill. Hence the start of Dunk Journey 2.0 the next year. So that was 10 feet, 9, 11.5, right, left. I was all about right, left. I had a lot of injuries these next couple years. I had a lot of struggles with my off the dribble because all I was trying to do was focus on taking off um, and getting as high as I can. So my lobs escalated with right, left because my form was so good and my technique was so great. All I could do was add speed, add, add more explosion, and I kept jumping higher. So I just, I just built bad patterns. I built bad habits. And then I had a lot of training struggles, which will all be in part two. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. And I hope you can learn from my experience of what to do and what not to do. And if you're excited for part two, fucking yell at me in the comments. And if you want me to make part two and I don't make part two, I'm sorry to advance but this is not my strong suit i just hope you enjoy i hope this opens your eyes to see how much progress i've made since then and i'm making my best progress yet i've actually had my highest jumping day this year in july so two months ago i was having my jump my highest jumping day of all time so even though i've had these struggles i stuck with it that's what i want you to do that's what i want you to know you can't give up if you want it you're going to go through these struggles you're going to go through the ups and downs but now you guys have a lot more knowledge than i had about strength training how to properly stimulate your body and how to properly build the right foundation for the dunk life god damn it that's an outro and that's how we do it stay tuned for the podcast i hope you like me as a person because that's what my channel's about i'm using this to drag to drive traffic i just want to drive traffic so i can get out of traffic for my job right okay here. this is getting into a podcast love you toodaloo have a good one life's so fragile it's so fragile life is so fragile